And welcome back to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. The first one after the very first live show, which was a smashing success, if I may say so myself. I am Perry, your host. I am so happy that you guys are here with us for another week. We're streaming live on Patreon right now because just yesterday we hit our, our next goal on Patreon. And so this is going to become a regular thing for you guys. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you, so, yeah. Cheers to you all. Uh, Curtis and Swan are here, hanging out with me tonight. We got a really fun little episode I'm super pumped for. Um, if you guys remember, a few weeks ago, we had that little blend from Joseph Brazo, mm -hmm. uh, which was partially that Elijah Craig 12 from 1997, and then Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And I was thinking, why don't we do our own blends for an episode? And so, that's what we did. And we all brought ours to the table, because Booker's is not one of them. Um, <laughs> I, did not have, I had nothing to do with that other than buying it. But I figured that we'd start off with a little Flying Blind blend. Oh, okay. It's that I did. And may I say, as well, this has been mingling for a long time. And I haven't tasted this in a little while. But... I did try it with somebody within the past six months. It's no, got, longer than that. It's got a lot of vanilla yeah? up front. Yeah. And I'm not getting a ton of ethanol, and that could just be where you said it's kind of been mingling for a little bit. Wow, it is vanilla heavy. Woo! Oh, but that goes down easy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's super smooth. Mm -hmm. It's a little dry, honestly. I'm getting that on the finish, like yeah. the drawing finish. Yeah, there's not like a really good mouthfeel coating yeah but it it has some fantastic flavors to it though mm -hmm. i will mm -hmm. say that much you know when you get to that point in the night where you've had all your good bottles and you're kind of just wanting something to sip on you don't have to think about this would be perfect yeah i mean it'd be absolutely, absolutely perfect yeah <sighs> i love this blend this was the first blend i ever made and mm -hmm. it was just and w what's funny about it is i spent probably more time than i should have working on it but i mean i think i it was while i was still in college or i had just graduated or something i can't remember for sure so i had all this downtime and i was like well i'm just going to spend an afternoon and i'm going to really work at figuring out this blend because i had this idea and i really wanted to go for it and this was that idea well good job barry well, it's pretty good <laughs> do you have any guesses on what might be in it what might be a part of it I'm kind of getting some of like the weeder notes. I was going to say the same. I was thinking one of the Wellers is I'm going to go with is definitely in it. It's just like absent of that like super heavy rye that you get on mm -hmm. some of them. Um, and it kind of goes down smooth, but I'm almost getting like a slightly higher proof thing from it. Yeah. But not like super high. Like yeah. Just barely over 100 type deal. Um, but that's about all I got. See, I'm not getting a higher proof on it. Really? Where are we at, Perry? I think I were. I think I'm sitting at like, like ninety. Ninety. Swan, you are spot on. Really? Really? It's a it's a blend of weeded bourbons. It's Weller Special Reserve, Old Fitz, bottled and bond. Just the old one, the, the you know mm -hmm. the that have this handle up, and then Maker's Mark Cast Strength. Oh hell yeah! Oh. <laughs> so it came out at about 101, 102 proof. Okay. And you, like, that's what I said. You were right on, Heck literally yeah, right above 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to judge with the weeders because, like, some of them go down oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. smooth that you just don't, you don't think about the proof as much with, with them. Right. But, I mean, like, for me, like, the wheat, I just kind of look for the absence of rye to kind of drill it as a wheat product. Yeah, that's, um, 
I mean, that that's one of the best ways to go about it. The other one, too, and I I didn't learn this until I got to sit down with Dixon Deadman um, for our tasting at Whiskey Weekend. And by the way, that was the last time I had this, too, is when I did the episode with Dixon. But the, the, the point that I was going to make, though, is that it that's one of the ways that you can tell if it's a weeder or a rye bourbon, is that there's a dryness on the finish that you don't get because you taste weeded products on the front end of your tongue instead of the back end, which is where you taste the rye. So because your tongue is tasting everything right up front and it kind of stops a little bit short, that indicate that that's what we describe or experience as being dry. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, it, it makes sense. Part. Right. Okay, so to put it simply, wheat bourbons, you're going to taste more on the front end of your tongue. Rye bourbons, you're going to taste more on the back end of your tongue. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the core of it. Yeah. So, anyway. No, that's really cool. And I think what Swan brought up was a pretty good way of thinking about it, too, mm-hmm. is knowing and that for the, looking for the absence of rye. Yeah, right. Anyway, that's flying blind. It was a strange flying blind. I'm sorry. We Two points off. for Swan. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Curtis got a good point there, too. Yeah. Yeah, we're killing it today, man. Yeah, hey, we nailed it there. Usually, I'm like, oh, this is definitely Buffalo Trace. And Perry's like, it's not. wild turkey. It's just not happening for you today, buddy. <laughs> good try, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like that's most times. Well. Good try, but. Good try, but. Yeah. Anyway, what have you guys been drinking recently? I've been drinking... Henry McKenna 10 year. Yeah. Which has been very good. I finally found some, found it at a good price. For the first time in a while. For the first time in forever. Yeah. And uh, so been drinking on that, been sipping it, been cherishing it, <laughs> been saving a bottle of it. Good. So I miss that bourbon. Just mm-hmm. being regular. Mm-hmm. I miss it. Funny though, I, I found a bottle of it the other day that was barreled on my dad's birthday. So, nice. yeah. So I left the store and I immediately called him. That's right. Uh, I had Eagle Rare. That's what I've been drinking. Just regular Eagle Rare. Just regular okay. Eagle wow. Rare. Wow. Yeah. Um, I had a bottle that's been open for a long time. I just wanted to go back and visit it. And having it like open for a long time, yeah. it is really mellowed it out. I always got like a slightly peppery note mm-hmm. on it and it's th- just gone. So I don't know if that's just the product of it being open for a long time, but it's been good. I've only got a little bit left. Probably going to finish it. This week, so. Uh, well, Curtis got me on a little bit of a Jim Beam bonded kick. There uh, we kick, go. Excuse me. Um, the last time that we did that episode. And I had a bottle that was pretty much full. I mean, I maybe had like a sip out of it. And now there's a quarter of the bottle left. <laughs> <laughs> That's even less than a quarter. That's like a like a fifth of it. Yeah, you yeah, killed literally. it. <laughs> um, yeah, we also went to Keeneland. On Saturday too, and uh, had, you didn't hit me up. Had man. a Keeneland breeze. Were you there? I work every day. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I should have said something. Um, got to see Chad and Sarah for a little bit too. Oh, cool. Sarah with an H oh, was man. in rare form. Let me tell you. All right. Yeah. Um. So, did you try the Maker's Private Select? I have there. tried it before. Okay. I didn't try it this time. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's. Yeah. <laughs> It's very good. It's one of the best private selects I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not a big Maker's Private Select fan. Just it, it, For me, it's just mostly the price point. Like, it's an expensive bottle. But I'm constantly surprised at how much I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. And they're really different. Varying oh, absolutely. From, you know, absolutely. place to place, which is really nice. Do you guys look at the back and kind of look for specific staves that you want in each one? <sighs> I mean, I know they're I, all different. You have a chance of 10 different ones. I haven't had enough experience with it mm-hmm. to know for sure what it is that I'm looking for. Yeah. Like, I know I don't like coffee, so I stay away from, like, the mocha staves or yeah. whatever they put uh-huh. in there. I stick away, from, stay away from those. But I've had one with those in there, and it had, I think, three, and I really liked it. Yeah. So I have no clue what to gravitate towards when I see those picks. I feel like it's a safe bet if they've got 46 in there, the 46 staves, mm-hmm. just because that's... 
a tried and true kind of proven product. Mm-hmm. I I can't even remember all of them. There's you know the the names of them are so yeah. crazy, but yeah, there are a lot. And now they're like having like displays that have specific yeah, like they look like uh, like the knobs, you know. But anyway, I had a Keeneland Breeze uh, while I was there too. It's a good cocktail. Yeah, they're, cocktail. they're really solid. I, I wish that they had stuck with uh, L8 instead of going with this ginger ale, mm-hmm. you know, just this regular ginger ale. I thought the L8's what made it special. Yeah. But uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the Keeneland Breeze is a cocktail that's specific to Keeneland. Yeah. And um, it's really good. I like it a lot. Anyway. And then there's the Buffalo Bowtie. Ooh, what's that? Um, I don't know exactly what's in it. Yeah. It's just Buffalo Trace, though. Yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. All right. We got some business to take care of. We do. do. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, we each individually did our own blends. We don't know what's in everybody else's bottles. I'm so excited for this. Yes, this is going to be fun. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first because I feel like mine's probably going to be the most like, oh, well. Are you sure? (laughs) I don't know. We'll see. Okay. All right. Somebody wound up with the Perry Pork glass, by the way. I think it was you, Curtis. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> Does that like automatically mean I should have a Perry Pork? I have eight times as much as you normally do. That means you're sleeping on his couch tonight. <laughs> oh, gosh. Shout out to old Cletus uh, for making that glass for me. He's a good man. At first, I thought like Cletus was like a, a, name, a name for like drunk Kurt or something. Oh, no. And I was like... What? No. <laughs> I was like, well, you've never called me Cletus. That would before. be pretty funny, though. Yeah. Just out of nowhere, just decide that you're... So, what is your drunk name, then? I don't you have, have one? one. No. Right. We'll, we'll be thinking on it. I've got one. It's Sean. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Somebody was calling you Sean at the live weekend. It throws me off every time. I, who was it? It might have been Ian. Maybe. I don't know. It is weird going back to your day job and everyone refers to you as Sean. And you're like, who? Oh, oh no. All right. Got that's it. My name. That's me. Yeah. My parents named me that. <laughs> <laughs> but your friends changed your name. Yeah, that got changed five years ago. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot on the nose. It is a little hot. It's got some spice. And what I've did... had this. Yeah? Yeah. Since we've done it. So. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. That's good. And it's like got some of those like darker notes to it, which I like. Yeah, there's a like like a real cherry mm-hmm. nose or note on the nose to it. Kind of smells like a like a cocktail more than it does just a a, a straight pour of bourbon. Yeah, which I think is kind of cool. It's got some heat, like building heat mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the palate. Like on the back, it has that real Kentucky hug. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Ooh. Oh man. You know what this reminds me of? That finish is spectacular. Sorry, go ahead. 1792 foolproof. Mm-hmm. It gives me that kind of vibe to it. Mm-hmm. And knowing Curtis. <laughs> yeah. I know he's got an affinity for 1792, so it's a good it's a good guess. But yeah. it does have like that kind of like heat to it. The only thing that it's missing from the 1792 is I always get like a banana note yeah. on that. Mm. And I don't get that on this. This is more like cherry. 1792 always has a banana note on most yep. all of their products. So, so does, um, and it, you know, it's the same distillery, but Barton products for me. Mm-hmm. So just straight across the board, no matter what expression it is, I always get banana on there. I do like it though. It's, um, it's just, it's hot, you know? So, I mean, it's probably not the best thing to like start off with, but, oh, but if you finish, this would hold up really well with like some, like if you just had a higher proofer to start with, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I I do like it. Have no clue what it is. I don't know. No clue. Not seventeen ninety two. Honestly, I have no idea. So what do you I think s- outside of seventeen ninety two? It reminds me of Jim Beam in a couple of ways. Mainly the the peanutiness of it, mm-hmm. but as far as as far as what it could be blended with, if it if the first element is a Jim Beam, shoot, man, I don't know. I I really have no idea. I'm gonna say this. Let's wait until we're done with all of our blends. 
Okay. And then we'll reveal them. Yeah, that's fair. So that we can, I mean, we, maybe we could vote, you know. Uh-huh. Or something. <laughs> Just, um, but that way, you know, we all kind of go in blind. Yeah. Once we figure this out. Anyway. Do you think it's same distillery? Ooh, hold on. I think that's a good question to ask just throughout. No, I don't think it's the same distillery. Mm -mm. Okay. I feel like if it were, I I could maybe pick it up pretty quickly, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's the same distillery. Okay. Yeah. Start me for a loop. It's like not one specific profile. Yeah, I know. That's the beauty of the blend, though, mm-hmm. is that you get to do something really cool and really unique. That's why, you know, Dixon with Kentucky Owl or the Carters with Very Old Carter, they're doing something that nobody else is doing, something that nobody else has access to. And it's so unique and so its own. Yeah, I feel like there's just, without like giving anything away, there's a lot of spice, bold, darker... I think um, so too, man. Hit you with has that kind of like heat explosion. Yeah, that bomb, that bourbon bomb. I really do like this though. I've I been enjoying you, it. I think you sold yourself a little bit short, to be honest. <laughs> okay, and maybe that's your tactic. Is you were like, mm, I'm going to tell these guys that it sucks, and then I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm the winner now. <laughs> yeah. Little do we know, he's been working on this since that podcast. So like every night going home. Literally, like the witch's cauldron, just like yes. <laughs> Yeah, he go into his house and he's got like bourbon still set up in his bathroom. <laughs> don't come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> or just don't take a bath. Uh, a bath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine's going to be a little bit more mellow. We'll see. So we're going okay. with yours next. Let's go with mine next. Okay. Yeah. So I got good old Swan's Blend here. <laughs> Name's still in progress. Yeah, we'll get we, there. I wish we could like get a little closer just to show it's... Swan's fun. I spent time on this. I wish you would have uh, drawn a little swan. I tried. Turns out I've not had much practice since I left school. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Maybe next time. I'll get there. I want to ask this question, and I, I shouldn't. But I want to ask, like, how many are actually in your blend? Do, and you don't have to tell me. It's very, very... It's There's two... Okay. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. I'm not going to add okay. anything else to it. And I'll say that about mine is there was two. You want to know something funny? You had three. No, mine has two as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And this is actually, I made two bottles of it because I wanted to try it because I, I thought, I don't want to mess it up with a third one. What the heck is going okay. on with that nose? Yeah. I didn't want to mess it up with a third one. And I added a third one and didn't care for it as much. Holy this birthday is very cake, mellow. Bomb, Batman. Yeah. That is wildly sweet. I wanted something different. That's you that's got it. Gonna, yeah, that's all I'm going to go with. <laughs> you nailed it, dude. My goodness. With that being said about it being sweet, it's not, I wouldn't say it's displeasingly sweet. No, I think it's very interesting. Yeah. And, and I got, I did the math on the exact proof too. Oh, did you? Yeah. Nice. Cause I'm a nerd. So I got that down. I, I did the I math. I do mine as well. I'm not exactly sure if I got it right, but I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the cake. Oh, it's like, like cake, s- cake batter. It's like straight up cake. Yeah. Like almost like a cookie cake mm-hmm. to a degree. Um, Kind of like those, you know, the like cake pops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what I'm is. getting. It's that's like what a, it is. It's like a cake pop, but it has that kind of like hard icing. Mm-hmm. So. That's super specific. <laughs> No, okay. it's, I'm, I'm all right with it. I'll eat those cake pops. Yeah. Let's get, bring them on. <laughs> it's like water. It doesn't have any of that <laughs> sweetness on the, no. on the palate. Oh, man. What a difference between the, the nose and the palate. That is wild. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, Swanee. Went for different. Yeah, no kidding. Mm-hmm. This is a thinker. Do you have any guesses? No. No, I don't. I can't even I can't even <laughs> I can't approximate yeah. what it what it's like. 
swan's blend is what it is. I it's mean, it's, it's yeah. the swan's blend. I'm not tasting anything because I'm. I'm trying to think. Ah, you really threw me off with this one, swan. <laughs> yeah. I want like the goal for me was to make something different in the like in the sense kind of like Woodford does where they kind of spread out their flavor wheel that they do like if you ever see one of those where it's got like different flavors all the way across kind of spread it off to where it's not hitting one particular section yeah so like if you have Booker's you immediately get into like that barrel char the peanuts the dark notes Mm -hmm. and then like the dried fruit they always go lean that way this one's kind of all over the place everywhere yeah yeah. Which it starts out with the floral kind of fruit, fruit. Yeah, a little bit. the The more that the nose is opening up for me, I'm getting less of the sweetness, and it's funny because it's actually transitioning into something a little bit more savory. Curtis is going back for a second pour. Yeah, some would say a peri a pour. Peri pour. It really does drink like water, though. I mean, it, it's. So easy to drink. Mm-hmm. I'm getting more on the back end than I am the front end. I think that indicates that it's not a weeder. Man, that finish is so good. Y'all have both brought really good finishes to the table tonight. Well done there. I think when I added the third one, the thing that I lost was the finish at the proof point. So, I can't say much more without giving some stuff away. You lost the finish at the proof point? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because the the proof point is a little on the lower end with this one. Mm. And getting something that's on the lower end that has, like, that finish to it that doesn't immediately just dissipate, it's it's pretty Mm. difficult. The nose is, like, fantastic. I love that. And the finish is great. And they're, like, two different sides of the spectrum. They absolutely are. Where I do kind of miss a little bit of it is right on that front. Uh-huh. But there's something nice about it it just being like water. It's 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 almost gentle. It's like refreshing a yeah. little bit. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about this, and I'm going to kind of rag on it a little bit so you guys can join in, um, is it's got the Woodford effect. Is it's kind of like it splits off into every direction. It doesn't really follow one narrow path to kind of define it as a good profile. And it's just an easy drinker that if I were to put this up against like a Four Roses cast strength or like Elijah Craig, it would be a little difficult to say this is my this is my go to. Yeah. But if you were transitioning from eighty proof Four Roses, you know, and Jim Beam White Label, this might be a good step. Yeah, I I see what you're saying. Like it's not a it's not a heavy hitter. Mm-mm. But it's super super approachable. And. I mean, whatever the heck this is, if it were available, I'd probably buy a bottle of it. It is two things that are available. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's exciting. It's so much like water. Like, (laughs) I could get real dangerous with this. Oh, this... Old Pear Bear would be making an appearance. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He'd be in... He'd be coming out of his cave. <laughs> coming out of hibernation. Here we come. <laughs> Good job, though, guys. Seriously, those were two great blends, whatever they may be. How well, funny would it be if we didn't, somebody didn't blend it? <laughs> Just was like, <laughs> I didn't do anything. You know what would be great, too, is if. Yeah, yeah, you just poured something straight out of the bottle. Like, yeah, here's William LaRue Weller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From 2018. Yeah. Got one of the little Elijah Craig yeah, hand grenades. I, I had an empty Elijah Craig barrel select, and so I just figured I would use this to to blend around. You got an and old tub uh, bottle. <laughs> I thought that's what that yeah. was. Oh, man. Sorry. So I had some I had some inspiration with this blend. I had a little bit of help from somebody, mm. um, but I, as soon as I found out about this, I immediately went and did my own blend version of it just to see if what I was coming across was gonna be 
as good as I was hoping. I was thoroughly surprised and excited about this when I first had it. And you should be. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I think this is the best nose out of all three. I agree. And oh. if going back to mine, I'd like to see something that's a little more consistent from nose to palate. Yeah. Even though that was fun, kind of having that like total difference. harsh transition. Yeah. It, this is good. This has got I'm some getting, of that like dark fruit to it. I was getting a little bit of like the cherry. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also, it smells like a weed or two to me. Could be totally off on I'm it. I'm looking away so that I don't give anything away. I'm going to get real specific here. Have you ever had like trail mix with like dried cranberries in it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. That's what I I'm see getting. that. Okay. I totally see that. A little salty. Mm-hmm. It's got some, yeah, to that point, it's almost like a salted caramel Mm -hmm. note to it as well. Yeah. It complements the cranberry that you were talking about. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Whoa, I thought you just drank the whole thing. I was like, wow, you really like this. So I I don't really get like heat on the nose, but I kind of get like the richness from a high proofer. And then when you hit the palate, it is not there. The proof is not there. At least it doesn't appear to be there, but mm. all that flavor is still there. Yeah. Yeah, it's dr- like, oh, it drinks like water, but has all the flavors that I want. Oh, yeah. It's so, my mouth just feels fully coated, mm-hmm. too. I mean, the mouthfeel is exceptional. This to me that feels finish, like. finish, too. You're bringing the finish to the table, man. That's nice. It has this like long, slow burn. This is what I would want if somebody proofed down a Booker's. Like if you mm. if you use some water to proof down a Booker's, mm-hmm. this is what I want. I and would some agree of those, so much with that. Some of them feel a little fractured when you break them down with some water. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just a product of like this has probably been sitting for a while and those Booker's are basically just flashing whatever water you got sitting around in it. But... This is kind of what I imagine it should taste like. Yeah. I could just, I, I just feel it everywhere on my palate. It's so full and so bold. I'm sorry I'm patting myself on the back. No, you I should. Mean, I don't mean to. But like, even the, even the oakiness is coming through quite a bit. It's mm-hmm. got like a little bit of a dusty funk too, now that I'm going back to the Interesting. Notes. Just kind of like... I don't know how to describe it. I keep going back to this on multiple podcasts, but like the dusty notes for me, instead of getting hints of this and hints of that, it's like it kind of smack of one thing. It's basically turned into a wall and (laughs) moved its way up the Glen Karen. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So I I get that a little bit as far as like, it's just a a very, very solid put together nose that raises the top of the glass that you get with not a ton of ethanol, which is good. I would drink this. I would drink all, all three of what we've done. Oh, no, I absolutely would, too. I think we brought three very different yet very good I blends. Think we should do this again. Oh, absolutely. And then have it be like a Patreon exclusive. Yeah, where let's we, do it. We like send little sample bottles. Oh, yeah. To them. Let's do that. Yeah. We'll work out the logistics a little bit later, Patreon, exactly. but that's, that's coming your way. Oh, that is very good. It's very good. <laughs> are the bottles readily available no <laughs> kind of yes and kind of no okay one of mine is readily available kind of yeah so see that's that's that's, that's kind of where i'm sitting too but there's a caveat with a bit of um, my mine is like yes with an asterisk mm-hmm. or that's, maybe with an asterisk so that's exactly how mine is too <laughs> This is one's great. one's we like we did we did something wild. Yeah, here, guys. one one <laughs> one is literally like you can go in find it anywhere. Second one, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, second one is you might be able to maybe. Yeah, you'll be able to find the brand. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know what that means exactly, but interesting. Okay, how do we want to do this? Do we want to vote or do we just want to? Talk about what each one was. Uh, we we can just 
I'll, I'll tell you my favorite. I'll rank them in order if you want to. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I think for me, I'm actually going to put mine last. I'm going to put yours second. So Kurtz is second, and then Perry's is first. There's The reason I did that is Perry's, it seems like it's more well put together. The only thing kind of missing is like, like I mentioned, you get that high proof like nose to it. Not necessarily in the ethanol way, but like the richness, and then it carries through on the palate. I liked the finish on Kurt's better than mine, personally. Mine was more of a, here's just a splash of flavor that yeah. isn't necessarily offered as a yeah, normal profile. I get that. Um, and I think these are going to be pretty divisive on how people rank them, depending on what they look, uh, you know, what they look for in a bourbon. Yeah, sure. Um, because they are all three wildly different. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that where your ranking comes from is the way that you approach bourbon as of right now. Yeah. And I will say that like yours, like I I mentioned, I tend to lean high proof. Uh-huh. So I got the flavors from yours from the high proof. With Kurtz, I got the actual intensity of kind of a high proof as far as heat wise. And then with mine, I got more of an approachable starter. Yeah. So that's it could just be my proof preference that's leading me to my results so i I don't know i did like all three of them um including mine which um i've gotten an extra bottle at home of with that third one added (laughs) in so that'll be nice to go back and revisit now that it's sat for a couple weeks yeah for sure yeah sure for me i would go honestly it's the same order um there was something about perry's that just had this overall kind of put together compounded bourbon that really felt like it all belonged. There was no like super outlier Mm -hmm. I felt. And uh, like, I really enjoyed the intensity not the intensity, but like the boldness of flavors and the overall body of what, what it was with mine. Mine was like, Hey, this is a foolproof, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is like a foolproof bourbon. Hey, I'm yeah. going to hit you. <laughs> and had, yeah. And had that intensity <laughs> and had, it had those flavors within it. Yeah. Those bold flavors of, you know, dark notes, cherries, uh, you know, all those kind of charred smokiness. Yeah. Uh, with yours, it had all that, but toned it down a little bit. And then, uh, with swans, swans was just really nice in a different kind of way. Uh, you had more of the the lighter floral, I felt, notes. And I could just down like wa- that <laughs> down it like water. Oh, um, it, it, if if that were a daily drinker, I'd I be would, all over it. Mm-hmm. I mean it it's not that it's like, oh, it, it it shoots up in one way or another. It's just so accessible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a solid foundation. Um I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So what was your ranking? You, me, Swan. All right. I'm going to echo that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and that honestly might be more that my palate is more dedicated to that darker side. Yeah. Um, as we, as we've talked about a lot. Yeah. We've recently. talked about this before, but. And it, it's totally not a like Swan's was bad. No, Kurt's was all no. right. Mine was really good. It was just a matter of preference for me. And I think that what you brought to the table, Swan, seriously, is it, it could very well be a product for daily drinkers. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to find out what it is. I'm excited to tell yeah, you. I'm just excited. on your description of it. <laughs> Kurtz is like, I want to I wanna take a step past that and really kind of wait a little bit into it and and experience new flavors and and things in bourbon. And then mine just kind of punches you in the face with it. And was like, Hey, this is what it should taste like. (laughs) Yeah. This is what you're looking for. Mm. And I mean, I don't mean to, again, I don't want to pat myself on the back. I just, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. Um, okay. Swan will let you go first. Start with the proof. Talk about how you came to the, making this blend happen. And then tell us what it is. Okay. 
Um, so the proof is 92.75. It drinks like it. Okay. <laughs> that's, what I, uh, that's what I thought, too. So the idea behind this is I was going to take a bottom shelf daily drinker that I did not care for that I thought that I should like. So um, the base of this is a six-year green label Heaven Hill. Wow. Yeah. So I really prefer the bottle and bond. I'd rather yeah. grab the Evan Williams. I'd rather spend the extra money on getting a Elijah Craig if I'm just looking at Heaven Hill products. Yeah. Um, not a huge fan of the green label. I mean, I know Chad likes it, so I, I kind of like got a bottle and I thought I'll just try it. Still wasn't a huge fan. So I wanted to mix it with something that I thought it was missing, which is that slightly higher rye, slightly more proof. I just wanted to see what I could put in it. So it's Wild Turkey 101 rye. Really? Yeah. And the ratio is 75% of the green label and 25% of the Wild Turkey 101 rye. Really? Yeah. That is so wild to me because I, I recently... Monica and Brian and Tammy, who are patrons of the show, sent me and Jason from the Mash and Drum a flight to do blind. And one of the ones in there was Boo Rye from High West. And that's a a blend of bourbon and rye. Mm -hmm. I had just recently tried Forgiven, too. And that reminded me so much of that. And I was going, during years, does this remind me of a bourbon and rye blend? And it just didn't. Mm Mm-hmm. So the fact that you did what you did with that, it's twenty five percent of it. Wild, too. Huh? yeah, that is absolutely wild. And I've never had a uh, a rye blend on that. Well, you'll have some in a little bit. Yeah, because <laughs> Swan so actually was, brought the wild turkey forgiven. Yeah, so that was too. totally different. Oh, yeah. I guess I've had that then. So I guess I have. Yeah, but it's been so minimal that I sure. Didn't. Sure. I just really wanted to press for something a little different because I know that like I was looking for more of a beginner style bourbon and this has got the proof for it. It's close to Elijah Craig as far as the proof and it's got mostly, you know, the Heaven Hill product in it. Yeah. Um, And the kind of point of contention is, is not everyone can find Wild Turkey 101 rye. If you can't substitute the regular 101 and I'm sure you'd get, you know, maybe a little bit darker notes to it, but you'll still get that high rye bourbon and add it into it. Um, and I just think 101 is kind of hard for people to accept as their first drink. Not everyone, but some. Um, yeah. So it's it's kind of like a transitionary type deal. Yeah. I definitely That's would fair. agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Kurt. <laughs> All right. You ready? What'd you do? Okay. So this is an 114 proof bourbon. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So... Drank like it. it yeah, did. no, it definitely it absolutely did. did. Uh, so what I was going with on this on this blend was I was taking a base bourbon that I really really enjoy, and that is a staple in my home, and then taking another bourbon that is even higher proof, and blending those all together, just to see, and they both kind of have a similar f- flavor profile. Yeah. But I wanted to see if what that what would happen with it. I had yeah. no clue, no intentions on what would what happen on it. Uh, so this is fifty fifty uh, Jim Beam bonded with there Booker, you go with Booker's kitchen table. Whoa! <laughs> wow! Okay. Really? Yeah. Hey, it's a watered down Booker's. It's a watered. It's down a watered Booker's. down Booker's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. You asked me if it was the same distillery, and I said, I don't know. You said to you the don't. the point of no. No, you said no. no I said yeah. no, yeah. Uh-huh. And it was. Same distiller. <sighs> Dang, man. That's fantastic. I thought it was pretty pretty solid after having it. I, know, I was wondering, I was like, this is prior to like having you guys talk about it. When I had it, I was thinking... Okay, this tastes like kind of Jim Beam bonded, just kicked up a lot. Yeah. And then, does that just become Booker's at that point? Or Knob Creek Single Barrel. Yeah. Or, yeah. But Man. It, but it tastes different than like a Knob Creek Single Barrel or... And it didn't remind me, even though it's the same proof, of Old Granddad 114. Yeah. It did not remind me of it 
at all. No, yeah, not Same at all. proof, same distiller. And I thought the thing that was crazy about it is I don't remember giving the notes of that kind of like trail mixy type stuff. Yeah. At all to that Booker's when we reviewed it. But with this, I got it. So I guess the just kind of the mix of it, you're literally making a trail mix of bourbons, and it came out, <laughs> it came out a little bit, you know, different. I, I I like the profile on it. I do too. The thing that kind of is a little different though is now that you told me that basically the Booker's got proved down, it still kind of to me at least drank like the Booker's, and I guess just because Jim Beam has so much of a kick to it already, it's the punch, yeah, yeah, um, we're kick. Yeah, so, I mean, now I'm thinking, like, hey, I can just water down some of my bookers, but instead of with water, I'll just add some Jim Beam Bond in it and make it stretch out a little, uh-huh. you know? So, I mean, exactly. that's, that's, not, that's not a bad idea by any means either. Idea. I could have made that Kathleen's batch last twice as long, man. <laughs> <laughs> I could have. Yeah, and one thing that I really noticed was through doing this, the comparison between Jim Beam Bonded and Booker's Kitchen Table. How Jim, obviously, Booker's, is going to hit harder and have a more complex profile and more right. of those notes, those darker notes. However, Jim Beam Bonded is like right there. Yeah, I totally like agree. It by itself. Yeah. And that's where you sit there and you go, well, let's look at the, the price point, the availability kind of thing. I, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It, yeah. it just, what you did was took, two really good things that just happen to complement each other in such a great way. I can't believe that you were like, no, it's fine. Well, you just talked it, you talked it down so much (laughs) and you're like, it's, you know, it's not even that special. It's really good though. It is solid. I mean, I guess the reason I did that though, is I was like, well, is it just bookers really? Yeah. Like is the bookers overpowering the bonding? (laughs) That's fair. All right. But it's solid. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. What's going on here, Perry? Okay. So this is right up my alley. Okay. This is 104.47 proof. And I thought I got specific. All I right. Got, I got to the 10th the mm-hmm. of the decimal. Is that the 10th or the 100th? I don't know. I hate math. Anyway, so I am by nature... And it's kind of dissipated a little bit recently. A bit of a procrastinator. And I put this off for a little bit. And I was just kind of waiting for like a little bit of inspiration. I was on Facebook. And I saw that a buddy of mine, Ty Gallenbeck, who is a listener of the show, listener of the podcast as well, had said that he had got a decanter that was bigger than he had expected. And I was like, okay. And he had made a blend in it that for two hours had been sitting and he said was really good. And I was like, well, I'm going to go and try this later. It was a two thirds to one third blend. It was a four grain product. I thought this is going to be wild. I was like, if this works out, I'm in for a real treat. And it was Weller Special Reserve, two parts. And Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B518, one part. Wow, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, here's where things get weird. <laughs> I took the Weller Special Reserve to another level. And I used a pick. Which is not very common. But this one in particular was picked by Harlan Wheatley, the master distiller at Buffalo Trace. So... <laughs> Hey, Perry, can you find this bottle? <laughs> Maybe. No, you can't yeah, find that you can't asterisk, though, There's is that no you can asterisk, though. There's no asterisk there. No, but here's the thing. Weller Special Reserve, just regular, with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B518, is still fantastic. I just took it a little bit further because that was the... It's up there. That was the best Weller Special Reserve I've ever had. I think I had it. It was very honeyed. <laughs> I haven't had it. Yeah. I'll, I'll find it. It's around here somewhere. But I, w- I was like, here we go. This is it. And that's been sitting for a couple of days. <laughs> Two days? 
<laughs> that's solid. But I've I've that known about it. I've had the inspiration for it for a little bit. Yeah. And I was just I just finally got around to it. And, and this is what I want a four grain bourbon to be. It it has that perfect combination of hits you real strong at the beginning, is full of flavor, carries all the way back to the end of the palate, and then just kind of explodes with the finish. This is, for me, an ideal four grain. I remember when we first started drinking, like, bourbon past just having it at a party occasionally, you explicitly telling me, I don't have, I've never had a four grain that I like. Yeah. I did say that. For you to blend a four grain and think this is it. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's solid. It's really good. It's really, really good. good. So, big thanks to also, Todd Gallenbach for that... Uh, also, we've been that on one, thing. man. I picked that. That was yeah. We did bourbon. Yeah, you really have. We. I didn't practice or points, anything. Man. <laughs> We're shooting threes out. How here. good was that, though, man? That was very I'm, good. That's yeah. good. That's where that heat was coming from. Was the Elijah Craig? Yeah. Uh huh. And that's what I was. That's what I couldn't pick out. Yeah. I was like, I know that there is a weeded bourbon. There's it's something probably yeah. Weller. But I couldn't pick out the the heat with it. I I was really trying to think, what is it that I can do with this that marries and mingles what I love the most about bourbon? This was just kind of like just by happenstance that I saw that Ty had done this. Mm. And I mean it 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 couldn't have gone better. Couldn't have turned out more perfect. So, so here's a question. How many blends have you done? Or I've, just as a, as everyone as a whole, how many times have we blended something? Out, outside of just like intentionally doing it or cause I mean like I'll wind up with a couple glasses from time to time. Intentionally blending a, a bourbon. I've probably done it three or four times. I've done it twice. And I remember my first blend, I did one part. Old Granddad 114 and one part Weller Special Reserve. Interesting. And hated it. Yeah. It was not good. <laughs> I saw somebody that recommended it. I could imagine it, that. And I, it was one of those two where like I blended it in my glass and I went out of my way to like make sure the proportions were correct. And then um, I tried it and it didn't have any time to mingle, but I was just not a fan. Yeah. Um, but this one I like a little bit better. Still more of a beginner type bourbon. I probably would have liked it a little bit better had I just started drinking bourbon or I was trying to get away from, you know, makers and Jim Beam white label. Yeah. Yeah. This was the first time I've done anything. Um, but that's why I think I took an approach of like, let me take two things of what I wanted to do that I really enjoy and just see like yeah. what happens. Cause that was, and for going further on, and like doing this maybe more often, I think what I'll do is start exploring into like maybe we try three parts of this, one part that, or you know. Yeah, and and I. So the first one I ever did was that weeded blend that we had earlier, and for me it was meet somewhere in the middle with all three of these, and I, I, I think I did that, right. The second one that I did was I like this aspect of this particular bourbon. And I like this aspect of this particular bourbon, but they're both missing those complements. So say one had more floral notes to it, but it didn't have the classic bourbon flavor. Then the other one had the classic bourbon flavor, but it didn't have those floral notes. So when I married the two of them together, and I think that was even a one-to-one blend, mm. it came out really nice. I can't remember exactly what that one was. I might have to go back and do a little bit of digging. I think I still have a little bit of it around here somewhere, but that that was my approach with it. The third one I ever did was a Heaven Hill four grain, just just to see what it would be like. So I did equal parts, and, and Bernie Lubbers actually got to try it when he was over here. It was equal parts, Larceny and Elijah Craig. 
And that for me was kind of like, hey, this is an untapped thing that Heaven Hill hasn't gone for yet. They should try it. <laughs> and it, it, it seemed to work out in my favor, in their favor maybe, too. But, um, and I mean, this one was just kind of happenstance mm-hmm. again. And <laughs> it is what it is. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Yeah. yeah. I'm really happy you with it. You should be. Um, and again, you know, I, I said that, you know, I used that particular pick, but I have tried it also with just regular special reserve. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a very fantastic pour. This just kind of elevated it a little bit for me yeah. to the point where I was like, this is what I wanted. And this is what I'm going to present. So anyway. I would like to have some more bourbon if you guys are Same. are interested in that. Or whiskey. Yeah. Because this was something that came up a little bit ago. This is a Wild Turkey Forgiven that Swan brought along. Yeah, it's got a fun little story with it, too, um, which you can look up. But it's... I, I like it. Um, it's recently, you know, nobody they're not making any more of it, but people seem to keep finding it all over the place. This is uh, batch 303. I think they just had the two. Huh? I think they just had the 302 and 303. Oh. The two batches they put out. Why didn't they start from one? I have no idea. No clue. That doesn't make any daggum sense. Will you forgive them? <laughs> they have been forgiven. Okay. Old Pear Bear gets a little bit greasy sometimes when... Uh, He's not had dinner, and he has to record Uh-oh. a podcast. Yeah. I can tell you right off the bat. That's I like, like me <laughs> every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, I like Except it a little tonight. bit better. Except tonight. Today, I'm good. Better than my Today, wife. I had dinner. See, this is what I would expect from a bourbon and rye blend. Yeah. Yours was such a weird shot in the dark. It was. This one, like... <laughs> <laughs> you get like more of the barrel char and kind of the sweetness that you get for like a normal bourbon. And then you also get that rye spice. But the, the rye is super present in this. And with mine, it was more like, okay, you need about 10% more of something because I don't know what I'm smelling here. I wonder if you could, would you say the percentages were? It's 25% wild turkey 101 rye, 75% green label six year. Have Heaven you tried Hill. a 50 50 blend? I haven't. I could probably go home and fill the rest of this up with one on one rye. See if it's any better. I'll tell you what. Um before you leave, maybe we'll do this just for Patreon. I've got one on one rye and the six year green label. We could just try that mm-hmm. just for the heck of it. Yeah. So yeah. But th- this is something that I pick up more rye on. Yeah. Specifically. And you Definitely get, on the palate. Yeah, you get a lot more of it on the palate. It's almost like an aggressive rye, and I think that's... It's probably more to attribute to the fact that, like, where I used Heaven oh, Hill yeah. in mine. Oh, yeah. Heaven Hill is, oh, like, yeah. a notoriously kind of lower rye mash bill. Uh-huh. And Wild Turkey's already a high rye mash bill, just for the regular 101. Yeah. And I don't know if they blended, you know, what exactly they blended with it or the ratios or anything like that, but it was a rye bourbon mixed in with it, so... It's good. How good is turkey, though? I mean, <laughs> it's impressive. Man. Listen, I have <laughs> I've hated on Wild Turkey One Hundred and One. Why? I don't well, know. It's so good. I just well, it's I my daily drinker, and I need to go back to it again. I know, but everything else that I've had of Wild Turkey, I'm just like, yes, give me it all. <laughs> Which maybe I just need to. I haven't had Wild Turkey One Hundred and One in a long time, so. Maybe I go back to that. That's going to be next time we record, it's going to be what I've been drinking. So you should definitely um, revisit it. I mean, every time that like I stray off into a different direction of like the spectrum of caramely sweetness and this and that, and you know, kind of like a almost like a brininess in some of it. And I always come back to 101. I was like, this is how bourbon should kind of taste. I mean, it's but 101 is kind of like it's just a staple. Like, Anytime you have it, you're like, this has got all the classic bourbon notes. And it is slightly uh-huh. different than what you recommend as your classic bourbon, the Elijah Craig. Yeah. 
but in such a good way, man. Like you leave the Elijah Craig and you come from like those baking spices, slightly more approachable to Wild Turkey One on Ones. Like I might kick you in the teeth a little bit, but you know it's still comforting. You know, it's it's got like the caramel yeah. notes and the, almost the slight tobacco to it, and okay. the very very slight nuttiness, and it brings in a lot of like slight qualities to it along with the proof. Um, I think I'm gonna compare. Like do a side by side of Wild Turkey One Hundred and One with my Jim Beam Bonded. Just I to think see, you should just to see what I like. Yeah, and the differences between the two or the similarities. I got an idea. Let's do it for Patreon. All right, it could be the 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 Patreon bonus episode for this month. Yeah. All right. Cool with that. This is what keeps happening is we just keep going. Hey, we're just going to record Patreon bonus episodes after we're done with the regular <laughs> one. Yeah. And we just get messy. And then, <laughs> and then Perry just gets greasier and greasier. <laughs> Not to be confused with the grease. I'm greasy, but not greasy. greasy. I'm off brand grease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the Costco of Grease. <laughs> oh, man. I'm the Kirk Boy Grease. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I um, really do like this, though. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people, too, in like some of the Facebook groups that I'm in. They're asking, like, hey, is it worth picking up Wild Turkey for Gibbon? Because not a whole lot of people talk about it. But, yes, it is so worth picking this up. Yeah. Trying to find this profile in a normal turkey release or even just a normal bourbon release is difficult. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of people that have done this. Like, they've got this. They've got the Chef's Collaboration. Um, There's just not a... Boo Rye. Boo Rye. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a ton, though. I mean, I'm having trouble coming up with five. But it's... It is good. It's definitely worth something, something worth doing. And it's also worth doing at home. Like, I just showed with this because you get interesting results absolutely so especially if like you pick up a rye and you're like this is just too much for me yeah i know the 95 percent rye and up club is a little difficult for people to kind of get into so blend it with a little bit of regular bourbon you might be surprised what you get yeah for sure for sure well it's been a fun little episode it's not been too serious i feel like we've been kind of serious recently with our conversation it was nice to step back a little bit Mm mm-hmm have some fun and just drink some good stuff. So I think that about does it for us. But before we wrap up, we have this wonderful segment called tips and bits where we recommend stuff for you to check out. I'm guessing that Curtis is going to go first based on Swan's reaction. (laughs) Totally forgot. (laughs) At some point today, it was like, Hey, you should probably think about this because this is going to be a question you could ask earlier or later today. (laughs) Nope. It slipped my mind. Curtis, tips and bits? Uh, Tips and bits. Yes, I've got one. Game of Thrones, because it just started. Winter is here, guys. It's past, but it's here. I don't... Watch. I don't... Thank you. Watch Game of Thrones. (laughs) Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) I think Perry and I thought only two Are you kidding me? You both don't? (laughs) No. Like, here's the thing. I know what's going on. I know what the the whole deal is. Yeah, because you see it on Twitter. And you know, yeah, I'm so on, oh, look, I'm on Reddit, okay? All right. <laughs> you but haven't I been just, through the years of never, pain. I understand. And suffering. It just never really landed for me. I just okay. never fully understood it or got it, and which is weird because it's right up my alley. Like That's I should, what I thought. I, I thought you were like a full, it. yeah. But it just, I don't know. Maybe I just need to give it another shot. I will say I did the same thing and was like, I hate this. This is not this yeah. is so boring. Yeah. And then about a season in, and it shouldn't take you a season, I know, but like about a season in, I was like hooked. It takes some time with shows. They have to get their footing. So I, under, I understand that. As Perry that. says, I don't like it. <laughs> I'll go back and I'll try it again. There we go. It's like Wild Turkey 101. There you go. Okay. There you go. Swan. Uh, I'm still at a loss here. I've been listening to so much just random music and stuff. Like, it's not been one specific album. I did just get around to reading some of Fred Minnick's stuff. It's really good, isn't it? It is very good. Yeah. It's one of those things where you're, you kind of immediately think, it's like, well, I really like bourbon, but I like drinking it. I don't know if I'm going to like reading it. And then he gets into the history of it. Mm-hmm. And you immediately just start seeing how rich it is. There's so much yeah. there. And some stuff that you just don't, 
you don't even think about. Uh, I mean, he goes in, into every little detail, and he's very nuanced about like how he presents it and stuff. And I, I really like it. And I've only got you know the one the one book, so I, I've got more to read. But I also look forward to seeing his magazine that he's been putting out. I think he's oh, got a few issues yeah. of it. Bourbon, Bourbon Plus, Plus is Bourbon fantastic. Plus. So really I need is. I need to get around to that too. But um, just reading through that's been great. And then just kind of learning more about the bourbon community. Like I've always been more of a solo drinker. Like I'll have a couple yeah. drinks at home or with a friend, but then like going to your, you know, live event that we did, just meeting all those people was great. Putting faces to names and kind of yeah. meeting people. It, it feels more of a community more so than just the five or six guys like me that show up at the liquor store on Wednesday morning, waiting for it to open kind of chit chatting a little bit before it opens. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been nice. It's more than just those few people. Um, Bourbon's just great, man. It's good to drink. Brings people together. It's fantastic, and I'm just now noticing it more than ever. So it's been experience. I'll I'll talk about that more here in in just a second, um, because I I do want to touch on a couple of things from the the weekend that was. Um, but Anderson Pack came out with a new album last week, which is fantastic. His so what what's funny is that he came out with Malibu a couple of years ago, which was a really really good album. Last year he came out with an album called Oxnard, which was good but not great. And then he came out with Ventura last week, so good. I mean, it just has this classic vibe to it that I'm all over. And I was I was texting my brother Dane about it too. Is he real? He's real. Um, and. I was saying this is like an album that I found in my grandparents' basement that had been beat up and only sounds good through these old crappy busted up speakers because you know that's how it's supposed to be. And the fact that that was my initial reaction to it made me feel like this is something special and something that's going to stick around for a little while. So Ventura by Anderson Pack, his new album. But I, I, I have to... I have to address the elephant in the room. And I say that like it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing because the weekend of the live show showed me so much about not just the bourbon community, but the community that we have been able to enjoy together as this show has developed and grown and evolved into something that I didn't think it would ever actually be. And we spent a lot of time together over those 48 hours where we got to sit around the table together and share a meal. We got to have drinks together, tell stories, share laughs, just be able to enjoy each other's company. And I think that that is a true testament to what bourbon can be and does for us. And it's not that bourbon is the end-all be-all when it comes to this idea of community. It's the fact that people are able to latch onto something and be able to come together over something that is this special and hang out together and have a good time and, and say... I want to spend time with you. And I know I'm rambling a little bit. I apologize for that. But everybody who came to that weekend showed me that this is not all for naught. And things are happening. And we're going to keep doing this. I mean, I've always said, I'm going to do this for as long as I possibly can. And the live show weekend was a reinvigoration of that. And we're going to do this for as long as we can. And things are going better than I ever could have expected. And it's because of you guys, not just who are listening, but are watching over on Patreon as well. So I want to say thank you. I guess my tip and bit from that is find a community of people who want to celebrate with you and share with you in something that is as special as bourbon can be and is. So, that's my soapbox. I'm getting off of it. 
<laughs> and we're done. <laughs> and rant. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, that's very good. And I really, I wish I could have been there to oh, everyone man. there. Yeah. And I really do. It, you'll, you'll be at the next event, which more details to come. More details we're not, to come. We're not quite ready to establish all of that information just yet, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about it here soon. So, anyway. Thank you guys so much for listening. This has been a really fun little episode that we've done. I know it got a little heavy at the end. I apologize. But anyway, Curtis and Swan, thank you all too for being here and being a part of this. It's been great having you guys along for the ride. If people want to find you on social media, where can they do that? I'm at the Bourbon Finder on Instagram, and that's about it. Don't really use my personal one. (laughs) Uh, I'm Kurt Kahn on Instagram and Kurt underscore Kahn 15 at Twitter. Well, there you go. I am at P Reader 1492 personally on all social media platforms. If you want to follow up with the show, we are at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can send us questions or comments to this, my bourbon shop at gmail.com. And speaking of the shop, you can head to bourbon shop.threadless.com. Get a couple new designs up. Y'all need bourbon. Y'all need bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Perry Poor shirt. We know we needed that. Oh, I got to get Glenn Karen's made of those too. That yeah. little design on. I Can we get like good. a fill level on the oh, Perry Poor glasses? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so again, bourbonshop.threadless.com. Couple of new things up there right now. Uh, give the podcast a five star rate and review on iTunes. Uh, that really does help us out with uh, reaching new listeners and spreading the word of the show. Let's see, what else? Uh, Every Thursday night, I have a live stream over on YouTube at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's youtube.com slash This My Bourbon Podcast. That's free. That's fun. That's another good little bit of time that we get to spend together and have some more content. Um, You know, it's usually just us hanging out and having a conversation. Swan's in there usually. Curtis might be on here soon as well. I don't know. We'll talk about that. Um... Let's see what else. Uh, Patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. That's the biggest one. If you want to support the show in a way that helps us keep going, um, takes care of some, some hosting fees as well as just making this happen. Um, that's the place to do it for as little as a dollar a month. It really is a significant way to make this show happen. Like I said, we just hit our most recent goal. We're hoping to hit our next one probably within the next couple of months. I think that's doable. So, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so head there. And thank you all so much for listening. Really do appreciate it. Next week, i got a fun little episode coming up uh, with a group of local bourbon drinkers where we're going to be talking about that community that we were just harping on a second ago. But... I'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. And I'm Swan. And this is my bourbon podcast.